So when thinking about patients with high-risk disease, particularly high-risk myelofibrosis, the first question you have to ask yourself, is this patient a transplant candidate? Because again, survivals with high-risk myelofibrosis are very short, on average less than five years, and so transplant has a demonstrated benefit in terms of survival over non-transplant therapies. And so really you, you ask yourself, is this patient a good candidate, both from their disease standpoint, in terms of their disease risk, disease kinetics, disease control, as well as the, the patient themselves, do they have other medical problems? And you put all that together to say, well, is this a good candidate or not? And should we be thinking about transplant earlier rather than later? The second tier of questioning then is, well, what is the major issue with that patient? Not with the patient, but with the patient's disease actually. And are we, is splenomegaly the major issue? Is anemia the major issue? Is uh, you know cytokine mediated symptoms the major issue? And then you tailor your therapy to address whatever problem number one is. And then once that's under good control, okay, are there any additional consequences? So for example, someone with a very large spleen, you may start ruxolitinib, and then all of a sudden, oh boy, we have anemia now, so but we got the spleen and symptoms under control, but now we have to attack the anemia. So it's really a problem-based approach where you're taking the most pressing issue, in first and foremost, survival, and then the next pressing issue, whether it's spleens or spleen size symptoms or cytopenias and kind of working through it in a very systematic and, and, and uh, way.